Today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report is about a condition that is in the news all the time. We hear about it so much and it's a condition that a lot of people don't know a great deal about and that is the high ankle sprain. In medical terms, we call it the syndesmotic ankle sprain. It's an injury to the ligaments that connect the two bones in the lower leg together. I'm going to go over it in great detail. We hear about this injury a lot, especially during football season, but it is a common sports injury. About 10% of ankle sprains are high ankle sprains. I'm going to go over the anatomy of a high ankle sprain. I'm going to tell you how they occur, the contributing factors to this injury, preventive strategies, recovery techniques, and return to activity strategies. Please enjoy this sports medicine video on the high ankle sprain. A sprain is an injury to a ligament. Ligaments are highly specialized connective tissue. They're made out of tough collagen fibers and they function by connecting one bone to another bone. Their objective, their job basically, is to stabilize and support a joint by preventing excessive motion. In the ankle, there are three basic sets of ligaments. There's the lateral ankle, the medial ankle, and the high ankle ligaments. The lateral ankle ligaments are the ones that are located on the outside aspect of the ankle. Those are most commonly injured. About 80% of ankle sprains are lateral ankle sprains. The medial ankle ligaments are the ones located on the inside aspect of the ankle. That's about 10% of ankle injuries are medial ankle sprains. And then the high ankle ligaments, like I mentioned before, they're known as the syndesmotic ligaments. They are located in the, uh, they're located above the ankle joint. They're located in the lower aspect of the lower leg. They connect the two bones of the lower leg together, the tibia and the fibula. And these ligaments are what we're gonna be talking about today. The syndesmotic sprain is, makes up about 10% of ankle sprains. So again, the lateral ankle sprain is about 80%. The medial ankle sprain is 10%, and the high ankle sprain is 10%. The high ankle sprain has a long recovery period. These ligaments, they're weight-bearing ligaments. They connect two larger bones together, and they don't have that great of a blood supply. So they have a longer recovery period. An extra amount of attention and care must be taken when someone returns to activity after a high ankle sprain. The high ankle ligaments, again, in medical terms known as the syndesmotic ligaments, there are four ligaments. There is the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the interosseous ligament, also known as the interosseous membrane, and the transverse tibiofibular ligament. These are the four ligaments that make up the high ankle ligaments or the group known as the high ankle ligaments. The high ankle sprain is common in sports such as football, soccer, lacrosse, basketball, any sport that is fast moving and requires quick directional change. It's also common in sports such as hockey and skiing because there's a boot or a skate that's worn and it requires a great deal of twisting and turning and there is torque being put on the ankle. Also, sports that the athlete is on an uneven terrain. So we think about trail running, we think about hiking, high ankle sprains are common in those types of sports. A high ankle sprain usually occurs in a sport like football or lacrosse when the athlete has his foot planted and then they quickly change directions towards the inside. So the right foot may be planted and then they switch directions and they go to the left. So there is an excessive amount of torque on the ligaments that are connecting the tibia and the fibula together and that's when the injury occurs. Usually the symptoms will begin right away. The athlete may feel a snap or a pop, feel a rip or a tear. The symptoms will begin almost immediately. But in most cases, that is how a high ankle sprain occurs. It is a quick directional change when the foot is planted. 
Again, usually the foot is planted and then the athlete cuts or changes direction to the inside, causing an excess amount of force on the ligaments that are attaching the tibia and the fibula together. Most high ankle sprains occur in a traumatic fashion. They can also occur in a non-traumatic fashion. It can be a, an, an overuse injury. But like I said, most of them occur in the traumatic fashion. The contributing factors, the intrinsic factors for both a traumatic and a non-traumatic high ankle sprain are a previous high ankle sprain that has not healed completely. That is an intrinsic factor or contributing factor for a recurrence. Also, poor proprioception in the lower leg and the foot. Proprioception is the body's awareness of where it is at in nature. The foot and the lower leg need to have a high amount of proprioception and those areas need to be functioning properly to prevent injuries. Again, proprioception is the body's awareness of where it is at in nature. The symptoms of a high ankle sprain will begin almost immediately, especially if it's in that traumatic fashion. When we think about the symptoms of a high ankle sprain, you have that intense pain. Like I said, it will begin almost immediately. There's going to be tenderness around the whole area and the pain and the tenderness is going to be located just slightly higher than the ankle joint. The tenderness is going to be worst over the area where the injury occurred at, but it can be spread out over the entire ankle. Also, there's going to be bruising, there's going to be swelling. Again, the bruising and the swelling is going to be worst right over the area of the injury, but it's going to be spread out over the, the ankle joint itself and slightly above the ankle joint. There's going to be a limited amount of pain-free range of motion. The motion is going to be limited. There's going to be a tough time bearing weight. The athlete may not be able to, to walk. When I mean they may not be able to walk, they may not be able to just stand and put weight on. And then when they try to walk, they're going to have a difficult time pushing off. This is going to cause an altered gait. Usually you're going to see a limp. They may have a tough time just putting pressure on the entire foot. The position of the foot and the ankle is going to be changed when they're trying to walk. So the symptoms are pretty intense in this injury. Again, this is an injury that takes a long time to recover from properly. If a high ankle sprain should occur, seek professional care immediately. Do not hesitate. Start your self-treatment immediately and seek professional care immediately. The sooner you start on the path to proper recovery, the better chance that you will have a positive outcome and a quicker return to activity. Take action immediately. Do not hesitate. All sports injury require a proper evaluation and examination to give you the correct diagnosis and to start you on your treatment plan and to formulate your rehabilitation plan. It's extremely important in an injury like a high ankle sprain to get a professional evaluation. This is a complex injury. Again, it has a long recovery time. So you wanna make sure that you start immediately and you want to make sure that you are doing this correctly. In the beginning stages, the proper treatment is going to be rest. You may need to immobilize that joint and apply ice to the ankle. Usually this beginning stage isn't going to be very long, but we want to make sure that the proper path is being followed and that there is not more damage done to this injury. So you want to get your proper evaluation and start the beginning phases of care immediately. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have seen high ankle sprains in my office. With chiropractic care after the evaluation is performed, the examination is performed, and the diagnosis is given, chiropractic care is going to help to restore proper skeletal motion and optimize nerve flow. When someone has a lower extremity injury like a high ankle sprain, adjusting the lumbar spine will help to bring proper nerve flow to those injured areas, also adjusting the pelvis and the hips and the lower extremity 
the areas that can be adjusted depending on the injury is going to help a great deal in the recovery of any type of sports injury. During the intermediate phase of rehabilitation of a high ankle sprain, the athlete has to be extremely careful to work through a pain-free range of motion. The exercises are going to be done in a non-weight-bearing fashion to start. Like I mentioned during the symptoms, many times it's going to be difficult for the athlete to do any type of weight-bearing activity. So we want to start doing ankle motions in a non-weight-bearing fashion through a pain-free range of motion. And to work very gradually and always, again, work through that pain-free range of motion. I know I said that several times, but we do not want to aggravate the condition, but we want to help restore these injured ligaments back to the way that they were. So you want to work through a pain-free range of motion, even if it's five or 10 degrees, and that motion is going to slowly increase. Once you are able to graduate from a non-weight bearing activity, then you move to partial weight bearing activities, then you go to the weight bearing activities. But it's a gradual progress. Do not push a joint into pain. Do not push the joint past the area of pain because it's going to create more problems. So take it slow, advance in very small, small increments. Once you get to the advanced stages of care, obviously you're going to be able to do exercises on an unstable surface. Things like a rocker board, a wobble board, a BOSU ball. Again, you want to work very, very gradually because we want to strengthen the entire lower leg, strengthen the ankle, restore proprioception to the lower leg, build stability in the ankle joint. In conclusion, the high ankle sprain is a terrible injury. It's a tough injury for any athlete to suffer. Do everything that you possibly can to prevent this injury. Strengthen your feet, strengthen your lower legs, strengthen your ankles. Use an unstable surface such as a rocker board, a wobble board, or a BOSU ball to improve your ankle stability, improve proprioception in the ankle, the feet, and the lower leg. Build a balanced strength in the muscles of the lower leg and the feet. Improve your overall fitness. Use a wide range of exercises that are going to strengthen every part of your musculoskeletal system and your heart and your lungs. I've mentioned this in almost every video that I've done in Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report, saying that prevention is the key. Prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than injury rehabilitation. Do yourself a big favor and prevent high ankle sprains. If a high ankle sprain should occur, yes, it's a tough injury. I just said it's a terrible injury, but it's not the end of the world. Stay positive, eat right, get proper rest, take supplements that will help you to recover. Do everything that you possibly can to recover from this injury because you can. It may take time. You're gonna have to be patient and you're going to have to persist, but be consistent. Be consistent with your recovery, with your rehabilitation, and it will happen. Prevent a recurrence by having a complete recovery from this injury. Strengthen your ankles. Build stability in your ankles. Increase your ankle proprioception. Do everything that you possibly can. When you are recovering from this injury, do start with non-weight bearing exercises, then go to partial weight bearing exercises, then go to full weight bearing exercises. Formulate a plan. Work with a professional that will help you formulate a great plan. Modify that plan as you need to. Work extremely hard, be diligent, and be consistent in your rehabilitation of the high ankle sprain. I went over the anatomy, I went over the contributing factors, I went over the preventative care and the professional care, your self-care, 
Help yourself do everything that you possibly can. Eat right, rest, take proper supplements, keep a good positive attitude, do everything you can inside the gym and outside the gym to recover from the high ankle sprain. I want to thank you for watching this video on the high ankle sprain. The high ankle sprain is a chapter in my book, Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can get additional information on the high ankle sprain in the book. Also, please feel free to leave any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, please give me a thumbs up, like this video if you liked this video. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, so we can connect on other social media platforms. I appreciate you viewing this video. Thank you very much. And always remember, train hard, train smart, stay injury-free, and accomplish your goals. I am Dr. Donald Lozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada.